I just have to share this. My name is Mike. I am not Matt's wife. You are very biased, Sean, with that comment. Uh, thank you. I, I think, Mike, you hope you're doing that with a smile on your face because I certainly was. All right. We've talked to Matt King. We have looked at what happened at Parliament yesterday, which I have to say was not the Nuremberg rally. In fact, far from it. And if you had read uh, the mainstream media build-up build and the pearl-clutching of Wellington's Mayor Andy Foster, you might have thought that the very foundations of our democracy were at threat and there was going to be some sort of Trumpian takeover of Parliament. I have to say it wasn't. It was a very well-ordered um, and respectful demonstration. There were different points of view there. The groups that didn't agree with each other didn't fight each other. There was a bit of banter, I think, uh, it would be the common parlance for what happened. And I'll be honest, it really was more than anything else a kind of political rally or a piece of political theatre around uh, Brian Tamaki and Vision New Zealand, uh, his wife Hannah's, well, political vehicle or grouping, and there was an announcement made which has um, perhaps political significance, and that was the idea that uh, parties or a group of small parties and groups who have at their core this idea of freedom and democracy and that somehow it's under threat and also, I guess, blowback against mandates and, and some of the more draconian measures that we've faced around uh, COVID-19 that these groups should come together to give themselves any chance of success, electoral success, at next year's uh, election. As we've heard, Matt King has rejected that invitation. Um, the Outdoors Party has said, nah, we're still thinking about it, um, and Mr Tamaki has jumped the gun. Uh, so that gives the new National Party, perhaps the new Conservatives, who we are talking to after 8 o'clock this morning, Helen Houghton. Um, so I don't know, is there anything happening here or, or not? We are joined in the studio, and I've got a, a bonus here, by both the Tamakis, by Brian Tamaki and Hannah Tamaki. Lovely of you guys to come into the studio. Uh, nice to have you both with us. Um, and I'll leave it up to you who answers the questions. That's for you to sort <laughs> yeah. out. No domestics well, though, right? No. Okay. Nice to be here, though, too, Sean. Yeah. Um, my first question is, well, well, firstly, I want to say to both of you, and I, and I said this to you yesterday, mm. well done for running what was a peaceful, democratic demonstration and political event on Parliament without causing major problem. It was actually, I have to say, you know how to organise a demo, don't you, Brian? Well, after 160 uh, successful, um, non-violent, very peaceful, mass pro uh, protests across the country, um, we know how to do it. Mm. But I think it's even deeper than that. It's, it's the respect that we've gained uh, as an organisation that um, we're not just going out there to protest, but we have, we have goals, we have achievements, um, not just the protests, and as you know, the protest movement has really moved into a political movement, and it had to, because of the um, problems and the dysfunction we have in our political establishment. Um, now, we need to realise that this is a different environment, and we need to unite all of those parties who are like-minded. It's, it's not going to be easy. Of course, we're going to have all of the upsets and up and downs, and You'll ask me the question, of course, about the Outdoors Party and the other parties. There's going to be jostling. There, are, there is going to be a lot of um, talking if the people are hooked up to boards or whether they can make their own decisions. Some of these people want to be in there, may have to make some decisive decisions. Do you want to be in Parliament or do you want to tattle with a whole lot of people that may hold you back mm -hmm. for whatever their opinions are? Yeah. Now, I'm not too quite too sure because, yeah. because, Hannah, you lead Vision New Zealand, right? Yeah, and we are a registered party. You are a I always like the And, and that I up. went from zero to one point something on a poll, which was actually pleasantly surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing for me is we've heard the people say they want the minor parties to work together. And, you know, maybe we were 
had our own kaupapa or our own waka going in one direction. But actually, isn't it about listening to what the people are saying? And when um, Brian got involved in the by-election in Tauranga, mm. that's what the people from the floor were saying. We want the minor parties to work together. So what do you do? Is, is do the people matter or does your party politics matter? So yeah. at the end of the day, it's hearing the hearts of, and the conviction mm. of the people. So for me as the leader of Vision New Zealand, I want to be somebody who, because I do listen to the people on the ground. We've worked yeah. with people for 42 years. And for me, their voices matter. So if I'm going to be on a part of something that they want, I'm very happy to do that. I'm going to campaign as hard as I did last time. I loved it, by the way. So... That's what the people have said, and that's what Vision New Zealand All has right. decided so to do. So it was yesterday more then about floating the idea rather than making the announcement of the actuality of that idea coming to fruition? No. we've um, Well, you know, the New Nation Party were there, yeah. the leaders, and they were happy. They signed the Memorandum of Understanding. So it's only two parties. That's not like a coalition so, of everyone. No, because your... I know what Sue and her partner, Alan, told me a day before that they were still in process. But he's, Sue's committed. It's, it's a matter of working through. And that's, but you've seen that tweet. That doesn't sound that committed, Brian. That's, that's their be business. Well, that's, that's not Sue and Alan, is it? And I, that's what I'm saying. I'm only saying for what they said to me, and I did not say we were over the line yesterday. Mm. I did say they were still in process, making their mind up. But, hey, they are committed, and it's up to them. If you want to be in, um, get in. If you don't, watch from the grandstands as we win. All right, all right. What about leadership of this new party? Has that been decided and how it will structurally run? Well, I think what will happen is once the parties have definitely made the decision, we'll come together, we'll meet together. And I, I suppose, uh, I don't believe in co-leaders, so it would someone would have to rise up to be the leader. Um, maybe it's the person who's polling at the time they make the decision who becomes the leader and work it out that way. But the thing is, we're all passionate for our country. We've all, we do have the same convictions and we're feeling the same thing with the freedom movements. Um, so well, at the well, end of the day, well, we're well, going to decide. Well, you'd be the leader. Well, at the moment, yeah, but somebody else may poll higher and then th that would be a fair adjustment and well, then we'd enter into who the... Who knows? Yeah. Matt, Matt King could have been leader if he decided to join with parties. There was, to me, anybody can. We have not decided yet. It's early days. Yeah, exactly. There's a long way to go. But essentially what Hannah said was right. We want to You know, I'm not standing myself, but I'm using what talent and gifts I have, like others who want this to happen. You know, united we stand, divided we fall. And mm. it's very disappointing because I think Matt has definitely something to offer. Were you but disappointed? You were sitting there when he was telling me that, that he's not, he, he, he didn't call you a lie, he said he doesn't trust you. Well, the people are going to tell him because we're better together than we are apart. And Matt is going alone. He's insistent. I, I don't think that's right. I think we should be all united. And if we unite, we've got to a great chance, mm. not only just getting 5%, but maybe even bigger, uh, a percentage. I'm looking at 10, 12, 15%. It is, it's not if we can, it's can we get together, agree on the bottom line, mm. put our differences aside, and let's win. Okay, well, I, I'm going to be brutally frank yeah. with you, though. Reality check time. So at the moment, you've got a Wellington millionaire, Michael Yacom, and a party, I mean, is he a registered party yet, do you know? They're in the process, the same as They're Matt. They're in the process, yeah. okay, in the process. So he's, yeah. you've got a Facebook page called uh, New National or New Nation mm -hmm. um, and Vision New Zealand. Yeah. That yeah. on your best day is at 1.6%. I'm sorry, that it's doesn't a, sound like a political no, revolution it, it, to that's me. That's right. It's, yeah. it's called a start. That's what you call a start. Everything starts from small beginnings, but they do grow. And, Sean, if we do this properly... And there's a big appetite out there beyond the freedom movement. Mm. You know, there are people, I know, there are, they're silent at the moment, but Hannah and I are going around the country at the moment and there are people coming out. We're looking at three to 400 in a hall midweek mm. and they are wanting change. As difficult as this is going to be, I think there are also mainstream voters who are interested. And if we do it properly, do it well, we have everything that this present political system doesn't have and do, mm. and I believe they're outdated. So th these are these are turbulent times, mm. and they are radical times, 
And so you just got to do the right steps. And leading up to this election, I believe we've got a great chance. All right. And you've got to get, no, to get over 5% threshold, yeah. mm. you've got to have 140 to 150,000 votes. Mm. And to be honest, that's quite a big mountain to climb mm. um, in a country where 85% of people never change their votes from one of the mainstream parties in their entire lifetimes. Mm. It's a yeah. pretty small pool that, oh. that, you, that you are diving into in terms of genuine swinging votes. But you're hearing people all the time saying, I've parked my vote, I don't know where, to, I don't yeah. know where I'm going to put it now. And then that's where that, those people are actually saying, we want those minor parties to get together because all of them have got something to contribute. So why can't we do that? And I think that it's pretty mean to say um, that you don't trust somebody when you actually don't know them. So, um, and I do know that I have said to somebody close to Matt, hey, tell Matt to stop saying that line. He had been saying a line and he took it on board. But the reality is we shouldn't be bagging each other. We should be standing together and working together. That's All what right. people like. All right, so you're like. still holding an olive branch out to Matt King and still be prepared to talk Absolutely. to him? Absolutely. And, okay. and everybody, because those are the times we're living. And if we, as I said again, we have the opportunity. And I think there's a, I think there's a, probably a good portion between 40 to 50 percent of this country who've had enough of the big parties, definitely of Labour. Mm. Um, so I am thinking with all, over a million, million and a half after the uh, big uh, protest and last one, the one that yeah. turned into fear, fire and fury, uh, there are a lot of people who believe that the mandates, the way you've been treated in this country and how the government's treated it, there are some brave people uh, outside of ourselves who um, have stood, have put our lives on the line and our careers to uh, get something together to get a better future. This is what this is about. Mm. This party is about creating new politics, um, new government, and having fresh ideas, more enterprising, and this is for our children's future as All well. All right. You say that, but mm. let's look at the numbers yesterday. Some, yep. I think people are predicting 20,000 people. Mm. Uh, I know the left-wing trolls are saying there are 1,000. There were certainly more than 1,000 people mm. there. From my mm. count, I'd say around 3,000 mm. uh, uh, people. Yeah. Not yeah. an insignificant thing, but mm. not the level that yeah. perhaps was expected. And you, and you mm. had three or 400 counter-protesters down at the cenotaph yeah. there as well. Yeah. So I'm having to say that wasn't the biggest protest I'd ever seen. There were more, no. more school kids marching against climate change. Mind mm. you, they did get the tick from the Prime Minister to mm. do that mm. uh, and essentially the day off school. So mm. I don't know. You might be looking at yesterday yeah. and feeling a bit disappointed, guys. Oh, no, that's, no. Um, that's, not, our, that's not the voting crowd only. Mm. Um, there are many who couldn't get there. It's pretty hard when... Um, the Minister of Transport shuts down all the fuel. Ah, now, hang on. <laughs> I, I want to haul you up there. Okay, do, you then, have, do you have any demonstrable proof, any factual no, proof that he did? I mean, I've been, you know, I've been a Wellington reporter for a long, yeah. long time. That is not the slickest and best engineered operation you've ever seen. The ferries the, the break down yeah. fr frequently. Well, it, it broke down, and so, you know, that's what happened. Okay, so, 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 uh, so some, Brian, some, so Brian some can we planes, clarify? Okay. You have no... 24 hours. You have no proof How at they New know? Zealand. How did they know they'd be fixed in 24 hours? Uh, and be, oh, and in New Zealand, your flight is kept on. due to engineering requirements. And there were some come flights come that come were delayed. Brian, the problem with that oh, is just, it makes you look like a conspiracy theorist. Let's just leave that. Okay, Even though BP shut the petrol stations down, but... That was a Tuesday. We, no, this has been something that's been done over the last two and a half years. So there's a big group of people. You call them the freedom people, and they've got all sorts of ideas and beliefs and social you know, relationships. Yeah. But I believe there's a, a good chunk of New Zealanders who would, would seriously look at voting for something that's stable, that has good policies when we get there, and it's not run by career politicians. It's not put in the hands... Look at the record of these people then, I'm mm. sure. Who screwed our country up? Just the two, blue and red, between Labour and National, not the small parties, they've screwed this country up. I think the Greens have got something to do with it too, haven't oh, they? Oh, yeah, we put them in too. Put the Act in there Winston, too. And then Winston. Put Māori in there too. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, let's, be, let's be frank about this. Um, a miracle could happen. You know, people could be over it. They're over the politics that we've been dished up in the last 30 or 40 decades. Mm. Why not take a risk, have a change? Mm. Would you... Uh, what about Winston? Because there's I, so much, I'll be honest, 
philosophically yeah. in common between Winston yeah. and, and you guys. So mm. why not Winston? Why don't you all get together under well, the, um, to uh, the, the, the banner of New Zealand first? <laughs> well, this is the thing. We, we need to talk. There's been a little rumblings, and there's still the possibility. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I like Winston. Um, a lot of people would have their thoughts about that. But again, if we're going to be united, you've got to give everybody the opportunity to come at the table and talk. That's what it's about. Mm. Um, you can't close the door. We're not door closers, Hannah and I. Mm. We're always open. We're open for a second and third and fourth chance. All right. Um, can I just run through some, some mm. issues uh, facing New Zealand right now and see where you, as part either individually as Vision New Zealand or as part of a, a grouping of political parties or political interests, will be co-governance? No. No? No, no. to co-governance. Uh, all right. That's fine. Uh, a capital gains tax or a land tax? Got a fiscal position? Yeah, not really. We, we need to be looking at that a bit closer before I make a decision, or my personal decision. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you're not particularly uh, uh, into that. What is your general feeling on what I'm going to call welfareism? Where does your political sensibility line in between the state providing a safety net or people being left to their own devices? Well, state welfare was set up originally to help people genuinely. Mm. Um, at the moment, it's definitely not healthy. Okay. And but you need people working. Okay. Is the Treaty of Waitangi the founding document of New Zealand? Do you embrace what is now generally called the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, interpreted to mean basically two forms of, of, of government or partnership? in government between Māori and other New Zealanders? Well, there's definitely a treaty that happened, no doubt about it, and that's, the, that's a fact between two people. Mm. So, it, in a way, that's where New Zealand had its birth, I guess, as a country. So whether we like it or not, it's how we, as two people, can live for a future that's, I, I believe, is better that we're one. Okay, so you... Yeah. Okay, and that's what the question is asked. So you don't think we're two people... The ideal is to be one people. Well, we don't want to be race-based. Don't, uh -huh. don't okay. put yourself in a position where you're giving people favours based on race. I'm not for that. Okay. Um, Everybody has potential and ability to be them. Okay. Abortion. Well, my no. personal position and Hannah's, mm. I know, well, she speaks for herself. I'm very, pro <coughs> very pro-life. And, and pro -life. I think... There are so many families out there that would love to adopt children. I think that they should have the opportunity. I know there's lots of sad stories would that, too. Would, would your personal views, no, and a political grouping influence the policy no. on that? No, no. We'd, we'd, okay. we would. We would. We would make our... clear where we stand. But at the end of the day, mm. other people have to make a decision. Mm. Just when they say it, you vote it for what you believe in, I think totally we should be able to do that. Could I say, Sean, it's the same principle as Hannah and I led. We basically founded the protest movement um, and through that with our men put our lives on the line to run it. Mm. The first thing I said guys, no preaching. No pushing our brand of religion or our church. And we've stuck to that. Yeah. And mm. um, so we separate just like anybody else. We accept everybody's belief. We accept those people as they are. All right. Um, <clears throat> see what I'm hearing is New Zealand first. In terms of policy positions and platforms, this is mm. very Winston. well. Maybe so, but then when we got when they he did his coalition with um, Labour, I think a lot of people that voted yeah. New Zealand First got very disappointed. Well, he said here yesterday, he says Labour's ruled themselves out for the first time. Before yeah, well, what a shame that didn't happen last time. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So reality is, you can flip flop around as much as you like, and isn't it great that I see a lot of um, men flip flopping around? I think it's about time they. Does Brian flip-flop around? Is he no, against? very rarely. No. Um, you know, and that's why some women rise up and they say, hey, we've got bigger girlies than a lot of guys because they actually stay with the things that they believe in. But it's funny that sometimes those men in there, they flip-flop around. And, um, I think if you've got a conviction, stick to it. It doesn't matter if people agree with you or not. Stay true to what's you for those people that are joining you for what your conviction is. And for those that don't, fear enough, we're all allowed to make a decision and choice for ourselves. All right. Uh, conversion therapy. That's another thing I want to ask you about. Where, where do you stand on conversion therapy? I, I, don't, 
I didn't get hooked up in that. No, we're, we're not. It's, I don't, it's no a, position. It, no. Well, it's an issue that I don't think is, it's just put across wrong. Yeah. And it needs a lot more talking about it, which I could do here, but I don't think it's necessary. All right. Yeah. Look, the other thing that you would face um, is that you are never going to, and you know this, you guys know this from your own experience, mainstream media are always going to be coming for you, aren't they? You well, are always going to be paying. We've had it for nearly 20 years. We're used yeah. to it. So yeah. in actual fact, a lot of politicians want publicity. They want media. Um, I don't think there's anybody in New Zealand that gets more media attention than Brian Tamaki. So, you know, love him or, ha or hate him. You want to read about him. You want to write about him. Uh, so there are, there's, there's that intrigue. <laughs> there's that intrigue. But to me, it's like... Why? You're just so normal, you know. I mean, do you think you get a fair crack? Or, and do you think any party you're involved in is going to get a fair crack out of our established political news media? <coughs> I think, <coughs> I think no. that's what scares a lot of people about us. When you look at us having a four-generational family, very functional couple, worked hard all our lives, Kiwis. Um, in fact, we are more what you would say is the kind of perfect New Zealand couple in, in our life and now there's no extremities really yeah and and the proof it is and the evidence if people would just look at our work and what we've achieved but i think it's the way that we are very we're very passionate about our country we're passionate we've always been passionate about people having the best in life as well yeah. inequality we don't like poverty we hate we don't like seeing maori languishing mm -hmm. i hate the fact that they were wholesale moved by this government into forced vaccinations. I believe their mana was compromised. I be, I, we've worked our, our way here to this point where we are now uh, by the hard ways of life. And we've stepped up when there needed to be a voice where I perhaps think a lot of people are afraid in New Zealand. Kiwis are not really uh, forward in expressing themselves, but Hannah and I have been. Well, we'll people help them jump say, on them. Well, hey, no, that's you know? not right, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't agree with that. Exactly. And immediately me to say, who's this cock rooster? Mm. He's not agreeing with us. Well, just because I don't agree with you doesn't mean to say I hate you. That's right. Look, mm. I've developed that, so now it's there. People say, oh, you're, you know, you're compromised or you're, you're um, baggage, mm. contaminated baggage. I said, really? I mean, my history speaks louder than my words would. Mm. So I'm well, like, I want to go to history. Yesterday, mm. uh, as you mentioned to me, mm. was the was the 18th anniversary yeah. of yeah. the Enough is Enough march, mm. which was a big march, much bigger than yeah. what happened yesterday. Yeah. And mm. a march which, you know, had some impact at the time. I think I can remember mm. I was a journalist. I, I, I was covering it at the time. 18 years mm. since that. Yeah. Mm. And you guys have danced around the fringe of politics and anything, but you've never, ever... One election, even to I don't know a dog mm. control board. Mm. So what's going to change this time? <laughs> well, Come on, because to be honest, yeah. you go back eighteen years, your rallies are smaller, and I'm sorry, politically, you got a t track yeah. record of non-achievement. Well, I've never wanted to stand. I've yeah. never stood. Yeah, that's the truth of the matter. I don't want to go to politics because my calling, my job now, is far higher than a politician. Mm. They come and go. I've still got my same employment, my call, since before 18 years. Yep. 1990 is when I first started. And I've told every Prime Minister and every, you know, politician that you guys and people put their mm. trust in, I said they'll come and go because people vote them. Yeah. People are fickle. Politicians are fickle. And I've proven that. I'm here 43 years in the same employment. Mm. And, and doing nobody, a great job. And nobody really can tell me to mm. stop it because we'll take your job off you. Yeah. Um, you know? Did Gareth Sharma ring you yesterday after he got kicked out of the... Uh, no, he the, didn't. Okay, you're mm. still waiting for his call? Oh, if he wants to call, that's okay, but we keep moving. That was tongue-in-cheek, yeah. though. That was Brian, oh, okay, that's that was Brian being cheek. cheeky. Because right. he knew he got expelled from the Labour Party. All right. And that was quite busy at Parliament yesterday because yeah. Trevor Mallard yeah. was resigning yeah. and, and he's off to Ireland. Yeah. Uh, which is someone said teaches them for beating us at rugby. That's what you get um, <laughs> if well, you do that. Look, I, yeah. I'll well, be honest, guys. Well, I'm really, really doubtful that this is going to fly. Good. Um, I love that. But I, I'm happy to talk to you about it. So, oh, Helen Houghton is on next after the news yeah. at 8 o'clock. What's your message to her? Are you interested? Oh, Helen won't be interested. She'll say they'll do it on their own. They all do. 
it's early days. Um, well, you just got to let it all play out. There'll be people who say, you know, we do this, we don't want to beat him, and we don't want to be that, and that's why they are all almost loyal to losing. And mm. that's what's happened over the last few decades. Yeah. Come on, we've got to all unite. But all we right. want to encourage them to go hard at whatever they want to do because mm. reality is, you know, people have got to give their best shot to everything that they put mm. their hand to. I mean, Brian didn't want me to, to do it again. Um, I stood up and said, look, hey, I'm going to do it again. He's like, oh, no. But I Only loved campaigning holiday. because I'm a people person. I love people. Yeah. And, and the whole reason at the beginning why we went was because I wanted to be a voice for those people whose voices aren't heard, those people that we work with through Man Up and Legacy. So for us, it is about people. And uh, we, we've won with our family, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. And I don't want them to fight the battles that we've had to fight. So we've stepped up to the plate. So people mm. like it. They might not like it. But at the end of the day, we've got to do what we feel is right for us. By the way, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we we enjoy I, it. I do want to reiterate that I think yesterday's event, no matter what it's, mm. um, you know, in party politics, what, no matter what it's significant, it was good to see people at Parliament yeah. on the lawns mm. Mm. with a, actually quite a low-key police person. Mm. People disagree and no violence. I yeah. think we've yeah. put a full stop, I hope, uh, behind the chaos of, of oh, what children. happened earlier. But that's really settings. the New Zealand way. Yeah. The New Zealanders do know how to, you know, be somewhere and not necessarily agree, but actually stand united in a cause. And mm. I think that was a really wonderful illustration of the true Kiwi culture um, yesterday. So, you know... It was a good day. It was a yeah. great day. We yeah. loved it. The sun was shining. Actually, I was going to start complaining to Wellington because I got a bit I, sunburned. I did have to say you that know, was, that it was, was the amazing. Thing. It has yeah, been was, great, and the weather was. Very did you notice it burst out when we were yeah, there? Yeah, yeah it was yeah. Like, come yeah, on, like, Sean. Sure. Oh, you know me. I, I'm not going to put that down <laughs> yeah, to any right. sort of divine intervention. You know it. I also want to thank you for coming into the studio today and talking Please about uh, about what you're doing. Um, and I wish you luck because, mm. gosh, you, you're going to need yeah. it. Okay? Yeah. Just being brutally Thank honest. You, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That awesome. is uh, Anna and Brian Tamaki. Anna is the leader of Freedoms New Zealand. No, uh, New Vision Zealand. Vision New Zealand. <laughs> no, Freedoms New Zealand. Is the, 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 the umbrella. Yeah. Um, umbrella of hope. And we'll find out from Helen Houghton if uh, she is going <laughs> to reject it, as Brian Tamaki suggested just a moment ago.